It's been just over a year since the attack on the U.S. Capitol. So last week, I went back to Washington, D.C. But now, I'm ready for anything. This time, I'm prepared. Contact number, in case I get thrown in jail. Money belt, in case I need to bribe an oath keeper when they take over the city. Or if that doesn't go down, uh, <laughs> I got Potbelly's money when I leave out of Union Station. But unlike last year, today there was a peace, a quiet, a calm that almost suggested perhaps our country is truly healing from the events of that day. And then we found this guy screaming at CNN's John King broadcasting from a balcony. Fuck you motherfuckers, yo! Yo, fucking fake news bullshit, yo! Bunch of garbage, John King! I'll try to get across to people in the world, man. I watch CNN, I watch Fox News every day, Chris Tucker, Hannity. You watch Chris Tucker? I yeah, love that guy. I watch all of you guys, you know, it's like... Money talks. Yeah! Rush hour. I wear their shirt that says F Biden. I say F Joe Biden. I respect our president. It's important to have respect for the office of the president. Exactly, exactly. And at the same time, wear a shirt that says F Biden. I mean, for me, yes. Do you understand the inherent contradiction in that? Yes, I do, I do, I do, I do, I definitely do. <laughs> when we drove by, I saw you screaming up at the second floor there at John King from CNN right. and go f himself. See what you're saying now, I mean, what I did there, that was not under the president. That was, that was me, my personal opinion towards John King and, the, and, and fake news CNN. Yes, so the fake news CNN should go f itself. Yeah. Respectfully. Respectfully, yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, do I want my kids to see me saying that? No, of course not. But I mean, we all have our days. You you did have your kid. I I saw your kid in the car. Correct. I have four of my kids in the car. Oh, so yeah, they. But they don't they don't understand. They're not of age to understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So th so they did see. They just don't understand. Correct. Yeah. Unfortunately, our nation's leaders were respectfully divided on how to best remember the day. On the one hand, you had the Democrats condemning the attacks as only they know how. We're privileged to have a contribution from one of the great creative talents of our time, Lin-Manuel Miranda. And on the other hand, there were people like Representative Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene who were unapologetic about what happened and were even planning an event of their own. We're proud of the work that we yes. did on January 6th to That's make right. legitimate arguments about election integrity. So we're going to make those arguments today Absolutely. in a press conference at 2.15, and we're actually going to go walk the grounds that, that patriotic Americans walked from the White House to the Capitol. Ah, a solemn walk in front of the media to reenact the events of January 6th. Plenty of time for me to ask some questions as they patriotically sauntered down. Oh shit, they're just getting into their cars. Hey, Matt Gates, if you're gonna uh, reenact the events of January 6th, who is going to take a shit in the rotunda? And also, who's gonna, who's gonna make uh, the gallows? Isn't this a little bit childish, Matt, or is that what attracts you to this? Oh well, I'll catch him at one of the other sedition reenactments. Of course, there were some who witnessed the events firsthand who have a different attitude towards the rioters. When it comes to insurrections, f them. I don't give a f Can I quote you on that? Yeah. Representative Ruben Gallego was inside with fellow congressmen of both parties, just yards away from the violence. Look, I was scared for the country. I was scared for my colleagues. Um, I was pissed off. The thing I remember the most is seeing the, the fear in the eyes of some very young staffers. I was here that day. It was chaotic. I got called an asshole just over there. Was it by a member of Congress or? The guy had a pitchfork. Do you, <laughs> do you know the pitchfork guy? Is he a member of Congress or is he? Uh, a... He might be. Uh, probably from the Freedom Caucus. Yeah, the guy I was talking to with the pitchfork. <laughs> if he's not in Congress, he's definitely running in the midterm. Probably as a front runner, yeah. Later, outside the halls of power, Democrats gathered for a vigil, hoping the country would never have to go through a horrible day like that again. But down the road, there was another vigil. We're outside of jail right now, going to vigil number two. Where they chose to look on the bright side of the potential treason. What would you call the events of January 6th? A wonderful, glorious event. People were excited that day. January 6th was the greatest day of my entire life. Okay. Hey, you're obviously not a police officer. There was no insurrection that day. If, if there was any intention on our part, we would have been actually freaking armed. If there was intention, people would come with us. We, we would have been. With zip ties or bear spray or a pitchfork. Belt fence. <laughs> <laughs> what about the people who did come with zip ties, bear spray, and pitchforks? Well, they, those weren't arms. Those were just minimal defensive measures. Who is the, the candlelight vigil for? The, the, all, the, all of the patriots. All of the 140 patriots, the uh, 
yeah. police officers who were injured that day. Yeah. So it's for the police officers. No, it's not for that. That's, well, that, this is for the, the patriots that are in prison. The people arrested for injuring the, the police officers that day. It was some people standing up to say, you know, stop the steal. We're here uh, at the site of where the J January 6th protesters are being detained. This is a vigil for them. Their rights have been taken away. So criminal justice is obviously a big issue for you. I'm interested in uh, protecting everyone's rights. Are, are you going to Rikers Island to protest the, the 15 people who died last year? Uh, I, I, I am not. Even a year later, selective victimization was still trending hot. At the end of the day, it might have felt that nothing has really changed, that we were locked in an endless loop, talking about the same things with the same people. I felt like that, apparently, for a good reason. I saw you in Hershey, that's right. Yeah. Oh, you bet. Well, hanging in there, man, you bet. <laughs> I've, I've uh, witnessed uh, a near downfall of democracy. It's been, it's been a busy, it's been a busy year or two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it has. It's been a little hectic. A hectic year, indeed. <laughs>